also with us, author Lauren Leader, who is co-founder and CEO of All In Together, a nonpartisan women's civic and political organization. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what you find. I think illustrative, one example we're hearing more and more is Senator Elizabeth Warren, who's running yep. a campaign that's just full of ideas, including one on student loans uh, she's released just this morning, but has had trouble gaining traction, has not had the buzz that some of her male candidates, like perhaps Mayor Pete, has yep. received. What, what are you seeing and what steps can be taken like uh, including for those yeah. of us in the media uh, to correct that yeah and I'll just point out one thing that I was fascinated by in the Harvard data we were talking about right before I came on is that uh, the women in the poll when you dig into the gender data the women in the poll were 10 points more likely to be voting in the next election than were the men and you know so you see this incredible surge of women across the country uh, highly educated highly engaged highly focused on progress and yet the political coverage of this historic record number of women running for president is wildly skewed and uh, there's been studies that are showing not only that the coverage has been lower in terms of the numbers of hours the just pure face time and discussion of female candidates but when they are covered they are covered in negative terms that the you know the way in which we describe women candidates is much more likely to be gendered in negative terms look this matters it matters enormously mm -hmm. and part of what I argue in my piece in the hill from last week is that we have to um, focus on uh, more balanced uh, coverage and that frankly also us, we in the media those of us the opportunity to speak at tables like this need to hold ourselves accountable for making sure that first of all that there's gender representation in the reporting in the newsrooms in the editorial in the producers of our shows that we're thinking about it unfortunately the the CNN debate tonight that's uh, that Harvard's hosting it's three male hosts and it's already been pointed out online that you know is that really representative of who is who our voters are it's not okay and we have to hold ourselves accountable you know our daughters are watching women are watching uh, we got to move past the kind of gendered coverage that held us back in 16 and that was so widely reported and covered it's time for change yeah so Lauren um, uh, describe for us if you could the specifics of the negative coverage I mean is it um, in, in a way kind of uh, characteristic of the stereotypes we've seen in the past what specific absolutely. negative coverage are you talking about yeah no absolutely and the watchdog group at Northeastern University which has been tracking uh, the words the actual number of words and the kinds of words that we use to describe the women candidates you know aggressive uh, you know difficult uh, you know shrill all the kinds of sort of gendered tropes that we've unfortunately become really accustomed to you know and you see this every Everywhere. I mean, in the recent article about Neera Tandon in the New York Times, it called her aggressive over and over again. So, you know, we see this. If once you start noticing, I mean, I think this is what's happening. Once you start to sort of raise your level of consciousness and you start to look and notice, you see things in a new way. And I think that's what we really need all of us in the media to do is to just pay attention, to pay attention mm -hmm. and to be looking more closely and holding ourselves accountable for the way that we're describing these candidates. These are highly qualified women. Yeah. Who have dedicated their lives to public service uh, they deserve better than this so what uh, for the Nira article for example because I see aggressive as good so I when I read that I think it's good um, but what what would be the word that should be used I mean so explain to me because I want well, to understand yeah. you know is there bias going on here truly gender bias you know or I, are we just going through an evolution in terms of our understanding that things like aggressive can be very positive well I think it's somewhat both and I think you know in the case of the article about near I mean look this is somebody who has had you know a really extraordinary career as one of the leaders of the Democratic Party by leading yeah. cap for many years you know you don't get to lead uh, if you don't have have a level of aggress aggressiveness and yet when we of just course. use that term in the context of women it is viewed negatively and that is where gender bias you know it's so ingrained for all of us I mean we all have it it's not just men but women as well have our own biases against each other and I think the point is is that we need to question some of these narratives more uh, directly and really ask the question are we describing women when they run in the same kinds mm -hmm. of terms that we are describing men when they run and I think anyone who looks at it any observer would say that no we don't and that's a reflection both on the changing norms the fact that we've never had five women running uh, but that also you know we um, have these kinds of unconscious biases that continue to rear their ugly head any woman in leadership anywhere in the country can tell you they've been painted you know with these terms over and over again and the more we challenge it the more we push back uh, the more potential we have for a more constructive dialogue